All right, here we are with the second playthrough attempt for Wreck of the BSM Pandora. My first playthrough attempt was sort of a bust. I pressed pause after turn two. Uh, I was getting a little bogged down with some of the overly convoluted rules and cross-referencing of charts and translating of numbers into other numbers and the multiple die rolls to perform single actions. I think with this playthrough, I'm just going to embrace all of that and accept that that is part of the gameplay here and it's um, not some unnecessary burden that needs to be endured in order to play the game, but uh, I think the complexity and all the charts and lookups really is the game. So, so my goal is to not complain at all, embrace that, and get through this playthrough in one piece. The game is all set up and ready to go. I've got the pods face down on the ship map, waiting to be discovered. I've got random starting locations for the three crew members that I'm going to be playing with. I've rolled attributes for all those crew members, and I've also determined their uh, starting stamina levels. The first thing we're going to do is a discovery for the commanding officer, discovery phase. Uh, it turns out that he is in the comp pod, and then we also need to roll and see if there are any other um, objects or specimens in there with him. So on the discovery roll, a four through six means that there is nothing else in there. Uh, a one through three would mean there are that many discoveries to be um, randomly pulled from the discovery jar and placed in there with him. The comp pod was a good discovery. It's actually one of the ship's five major systems. So whenever you find one of those systems, you have to roll two dice to determine the status level. So we rolled a nine, that translates to a seven. And then we basically can set the comp level to a value of seven. Once we've determined what the level of all five systems are, and if they are level four or above, then we can actually try to restart the ship. And that is one of the victory conditions for the game. All right, so let's move on to our science officer. Uh, we're gonna do an initial discovery for them. And that is a power pod, which is also one of five systems. So we do another roll, we roll 11. We look up here, attribute level 11 equals nine. So our power is actually gonna be at level nine, which is great. Roll for discovery to see if there's anything else in the chamber with him. We roll a two, so that means we have to draw two counters from our discovery dish. And we have in this pod with us an EVA bot, which can actually leave the ship, and a stun rod, which is great for trying to stun specimens that you're trying to recapture. And then finally, we're gonna do discovery phase for the MO stasis pod. Um, roll a four, that translates to red means the stasis pod is basically broken. So we go over here and we use this red status marker face up on the stasis pod. All right, so that's the end of turn one. Fairly painless. So I think for turn two, uh, the commanding officer is going to uh, move out into tube A36 and we roll for discovery. We roll one, so the commanding officer discovers a decon com. Uh, it may remote control the decon pod. So then the next question is what does the decon pod do? It looks like here it remote controls um, EVA bots, U bots. So it's interesting, we actually have a remote control for a remote control. 
So I was going to have the commanding officer pick up the decon comm because it seems like it would be handy to have that. But the decon comm weighs two and the commanding officer has a port of one. He's basically the weakest commanding officer that's ever existed and he will pretty much not be able to pick up anything. And I think the MO is basically going to hop into this tube We'll roll for discovery, we roll a four, so there is nothing to be discovered in that tube. Okay, turn three. Uh, we basically just wanna find the other three major ship system pods so that we can restart this puppy. So the commanding officer is going to go into pod A3 and we're gonna do a discovery on that. Um, we've got a restraint pod in here which is capable of restraining specimens if we stun them. And then we're gonna roll for discovery. We roll a two, so we're gonna randomly draw two items. An armor rig and a specimen named Fletcher. <laughs> uh, one thing I forgot to do is find the status of the stun rod and the EVA bot. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Stun rod. We rolled a four, which translates to uh, red status. So the stun rod is actually broken at the moment, which is unfortunate. The EVA bot, we need to roll for their its status as well. Uh, rule of seven. Seven equates to a five. So a five is yellow. EVA bot has a yellow status. So since the EVA bot is of yellow status, we actually have to roll to see if this bot is berserk. On a one or two, the bot is berserk. One. So, so this bot is actually berserk. Um, we should have discovered that back in the power pod, but whatever, we'll go ahead and deal with it now since I overlooked it before. So we have to figure out what the EVA bot's reaction is gonna be. He basically reacts as a specimen right now with an intelligence and an aggression rating of nine. Okay, so with an aggression and intelligence of nine, um, these are the values that we're gonna be looking at as we roll 2d6. So we roll an eight. Which one of these numbers is the closest to eight? Basically, the EVA bot is berserk and is going to try to kill the science officer. All right, so we need to get the combat differential uh, between the EVA bot and the science officer. It turns out that when a piece of equipment is uh, of status red, it's actually just returned, it's removed from the game. Uh, it's completely broken. I think it's put back in the pool. But anyway, so the combat differential is the impair rating of the attacker minus the shield rating of the defender. So. The impair rating of the EVA bot is 4 minus the shield rating minus 3, so the combat differential is 1. So we have a plus 1, and then we roll a die, 6. Plus 1, with a die roll of 6 equals 1, the number of levels. The EVA bot does 1 level of damage to the SO. And now what we need to do is figure out what Fletcher's reaction is. So we need to figure out the intelligence and aggression rating of Fletcher. These first two values here are the modifiers. So there's a negative one modifier for intelligence. So we roll two dice, eight minus one, is seven. Fletcher has an intelligence of five. So 
we go over here to Fletcher, Intelligence, 5. Fletcher has an aggression modifier of positive 1, so we roll for that attribute. We roll a 5, plus 1 is 6, and then we go here. That translates to a 4, so Fletcher has an aggression of 4. Now that we have the intelligence and aggression, we can figure out what Fletcher's reaction is going to be. So we roll two dice, spin in. Ah, beautiful. We roll a seven. So that's going to correlate to this result, which is move. Fletcher actually can't move because he's already in the pod with the crew member that triggered the move reaction so Fletcher basically is just going to stay put and not do anything so now we're back to the SO um, on turn three and he is locked in combat with the EVA bot unfortunately which brings the SO stamina down to Five. I mean, with this combat differential of one, the EVA bot basically has a 50% chance of inflicting one point of damage uh, on the science officer per turn. So this battle is going to go on for a long time, uh, five or ten turns at least. Eventually the SO is going to be killed by the EVA bot, but it's it's basically just going to be this endurance situation. So maybe I can send some other crew members in to help or some bots, but uh, and unless this situation changes, it's just going to be a long battle for the slow demise of the science officer. Anyway, to the medical officer. The medical officer actually has a pretty strong impair rating, so maybe I'll send him in to try to help. So, I think the medical officer is actually going to move to uh, this adjacent tube, and then we have to roll for discovery. Three... So the medical officer is going to encounter three items, a comp com, a specimen named Shazam, and the I'm Rebot. So we got to do, we got to determine status on the comp com. I'm Rebot. Then we also have to determine if he's Berserk. That bot, fortunately, is not Berserk. And then we have to roll Reaction on Shazam. So we have to find Shazam's Intelligence and Aggression ratings. Shazam has a, uh, an Intelligence modifier of negative one. So we roll a five, minus one is a four, aggression rating of two, so, or intelligence rating of two, sorry, Shazam, intelligence, two, so Shazam is dumb as a box of rocks, and aggression is modifier three, so we roll a natural seven, with a modifier of three, brings it up to 10. Shazam is very aggressive. Eight. So Shazam is extremely aggressive, but not very intelligent. Kind of a Donald Trump, if you will. Now, since that move is in bold, it means that Shazam is going to move into the pod containing the medical officer and try to kill him. So he's already in that pod. 
So he's basically going to execute a kill com command on the medical officer. The medical officer does two damage to Shazam. Shazam had a shield of one and two units of damage were done. So the medical officer has just killed the specimen. And the medical officer only has a repair rating of one. I was gonna see if the medical officer could try to repair the I'm robot, but I'm just I think I'm gonna let I'm gonna let that lie. Alright, back to the commanding officer. Uh, he is not engaged in combat with Fletcher, so I'm going to um, I'm going to do hasty movement. Um, I think into the riser, I'm actually going to try to go help the science officer. Yeah, I can't really figure out if you're supposed to do discovery when you enter a riser. I'm going to assume that the riser is like a tiny ladder or some sort of space that probably isn't going to have tools inside of it, or lots of specimens and bots and stuff. In the maintenance pod, we've got the recon bot and the speci bot. So now I need to determine the status. So the speci bot is in condition red. Um, it doesn't really do anything. It's got a speed of seven, and it's capable of stunning, but I, if I repair it to a level yellow, then it might go berserk. So I'm just gonna, I'm turning it upside down. It's status red, it's broken. I think I'm gonna leave it broken. The recon bot um, has a built-in scanner. Um, so I might bring the, the recon bot with me. All right, commanding officer is going to do a hasty movement into this module where the EVA bot is locked in com combat with the uh, science officer. At this point, it's kind of unclear, like, does the EVA bot, do we do a reaction check on the EVA bot with, with the commanding officer? Um, since it's already engaged in combat with the science officer, um, these types of things are really kind of unclear to me. And they're not necessarily even covered in the rules. So I'm just gonna like house rule this and then I'm gonna have the science officer and the commanding officer combine attack the EVA bot. And from what I understand, we need to add their impair ratings together. So we've got um, a five and a seven. That's impair rating of 12. Combat differential of five. We roll a two with a combat differential of five. Um, that knocks the EVA bot's status level down one unit, which basically takes him from yellow to red. We've, we have disabled the EVA bot. And we will just turn him upside down to indicate that his status level is red. And medical officer is going to do hasty movement with the recon bot because why not? Do discovery. Got a stage pod. Roll for discovery. Five. There's nothing else in this pod. All right. Commanding officer is going to do normal movement. Discovery of a restraint pod, plus we're going to roll for discovery, one, which means the commanding officer has also discovered, ooh, a specimen, mother. So we need to uh, roll for intelligence and aggression. There's a plus three modifier on intelligence, so we've got 11, 12, 13, 14. Mother has an intelligence of nine, and there's zero modifier on aggression, so that's a seven, which translates to a five. So mother has an intelligence of nine and an aggression of five. So then we go over here, intelligence nine, 
aggression five. Uh, our range is uh, two, five, eight. So we roll a 10. Basically, uh, that's gonna be a kill. So mother is going to try to kill the commanding officer, which means we need to roll for impair and shield. There's a plus one for impair. So impair is a two, plus one is three. Fortunately, we rolled low on that, so there's an impair rating of one for mother. And then shield, um, there's a plus three modifier on that. So we've got seven, eight, nine, ten. Translates to an eight. So mother has a great shield, but not much of an attack ability. So then we go for the combat differential. Impair one minus shield four. It's a negative value, so mother actually cannot attack the commanding officer. So with the shield eight, um, it's going to be pretty impossible for any of my crew members to attack mother. But mother has such a horrible uh, impair rating that it doesn't. That she's not really going to be able to attack them either. So. I would assume since no conflict, no combat actually occurred here that the commanding officer would be able to leave that situation. Uh, the commanding officer has a speed of eight anyway, so that shouldn't be a problem. I guess if we were gonna roll for mother's speed, um, that would be a five. Um, with a modifier of zero, which would be a three. So mother has a speed of three, pretty slow. Combat, or the commanding officer could definitely outrun mother. So we're gonna move on to the science officer who is going to do um, normal movement into the tube. Roll for discovery, six. There's nothing else in the tube. And then we're gonna go on to the medical officer who is going to do um, hasty movement into this tube. We're basically just trying to find like the ship systems as fast as we can right now. And we're gonna roll for discovery. Two, two items are discovered in this tube. Um, an enviro rig and another specimen, Typhu. Intelligence, three. Aggression seven, uh, four, five, ten is the range that we're rolling for. Ooh, we rolled a ten. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, that means that Typhu is going to try to kill the medical officer, but it's going to be uh, it's going to have uh, um, impair rating is doubled and shield rating is half for that attack. It's a charge kill. So Typhoon's shield is actually knocked down. From four to two. he's going to do hasty movement into this tube that's already been explored. Uh, the reason I think he can leave Mother is because Mother can't attack him. Mother's impair rating is uh, way too low, and so they would just be forever locked in some sort of stalemate if the commanding officer wasn't allowed to leave, and his speed is also much higher than Mother's, so there shouldn't be a problem. Um, and then I think that's going to be it for the Commanding officer, science officer, is going to go into um, um, normal movement into this pod. And it reveals restraint pod, and let's also do um, discovery is six, so nothing else is discovered in there. And then the medical officer is still engaged in combat with Typhoon. 
one point of damage to the medical officer who's now down to two. And then the medical officer is going to uh, return the favor. Die roll three, combat differential five. Uh, that's going to be a negative one on the shield. Typhoon sh shield is down to one. Actually, uh, Shazam was killed earlier in combat. His shield is down to zero. All right. End of turn. So I'm trying to find the rest of the vital ship systems. Uh, so I'm basically just racing through the ship as quickly as possible um, into pods. The commanding officer is going to go into here. Um, he discovers the landlock. I'll have to read what that does. I have no idea. And also roll for discovery six so there is nothing else in that pod. Um, I'm going to call it I'm going to call it good on him, and I'm going to do a hasty movement. This has already been explored, so hasty movement into this tube, and then we need to roll for discovery. Uh, six, so there is nothing in that tube. The SO's turn is done, and then we're going to go back to the MO. Uh, he is locked in combat with Typhu. I rolled a six on that. So Typhu has been killed by the medical officer. The commanding officer is going to do hasty movement into this tube with the science officer. His turn is done. Science officer is going to do normal movement into B1. Reveal this pod. Ooh, the con pod. So that is one of the vital ship systems, which means we need to roll for its status. 10. It's a decent roll. Status 8. So the con level is up here at 8. So now we've uh, discovered three of the five ship systems. And I guess we need to roll for discovery two. So the science officer is also going to discover um, an eye kit and a grindel. The medical officer is going to um, try to discover some more ship systems. Um, bot pod. Eight. Translate to a six. The bot pod is condition yellow. And I got a roll for discovery. See if anything else is in there. Five. Fortunately, he doesn't run into anything else while he's there. And I think that's end of turn. The commanding officer jumped into this pod to try to help the science officer battle the Grindel. Uh, and during this round of combat, the science officer was killed, uh, but the Grindel was also injured. So hopefully the commanding officer can finish the job on the next turn. All right, several turns later, the Grindel has killed the commanding officer as well. It was a long, drawn-out, grueling fight that went on. For several turns. Um, the Grendel is down to shield two, so uh, he's taken severe, a severe beating as well. So the basic problem I have is that two of my crew members are dead because they engaged in some pretty risky behavior. Um, and the medical officer has a repair rating of one, so he's really not capable of repairing anything. And a lot of the equipment around here that could be useful is actually in a red state, so it's broken. And some of the bots are in a yellow state, so if I use them, 
there's a good chance that they could um, become berserk, in which case they would probably kill the medical officer at this point. All right, so the medical officer was able to escape the golem, um, who did not uh, choose to react in an aggressive fashion. Um, the medical officer then discovered the Enviopod, which ended up having a ship status of eight, which is good. And then the medical officer uh, went into pod C7, discovered the med pod, and was able, over the course of two turns, to recover all of his stamina. So now maybe we're back in the game a little bit. Um, there is one more pod that the medical officer needs to find, which is the nav pod. And once that is accomplished, uh, it may be possible to restart the ship. Medical officer uh, continues to, over the course of several turns, came through here, discovers missing canal pod, crew pod, and a mouse. Uh, the mouse reacted by fleeing. All right, so I need to get the medical officer from here all the way up to deck A, and he needs to find the nav pod in order to restart the ship. Um, the medical officer is going to do another hasty movement into the riser. One thing that I haven't been doing correctly is that when a crew member exits a space with uh, a specimen, apparently you're supposed to do a reaction roll then as well. So six. So that would be another move. So he's basically, the mouse is gonna to continue to try to follow the medical officer, but yeah, I think we're gonna lose him. And then the medical officer is going to do another hasty movement um, into tube A36. One of these is the nav pod, and that's what we need. I don't know, I think I'm just gonna do a hasty movement into here. Going balls out here. Ooh. <laughs> I got really lucky. Discovered the nav pod. We need to roll for status on that nav pod. Nine. That translates to a seven. So the nav level is actually at a seven. So now we have all of our ship systems accounted for and they're all status green. Um, so I can actually attempt to restart the ship at this point, but first I need to roll for discovery and see if there's anything else hiding in that pod. Um, we discover one item. So once per phase, I can actually try to restart the ship, and from the nav pod, I actually get a plus two on each of my rolls. So I have to roll for all five systems and reference the restart table. So uh, my first roll is a two. Once all the ship systems have been restarted, then I basically do discovery on every uh, remaining pod. So we instantly know what exists in every pod. So. Uh, we do discovery on this one, and there's nothing else in that pod. We're gonna do discovery on um, the decon. There's nothing left in that one. We're gonna do discovery on this pod. There's nothing in that one. And then we're gonna do discovery on this pod. There are three items, and I guess we'll roll status on each one of those. So now we have basically explored the entire ship. We know exactly what's going on in every single pod. The only thing left to do to actually win the game is to capture or kill all of the remaining specimens that are loose aboard the ship. <laughs> okay, this is where it gets crazy. I've got all these 
different pieces of equipment that I can use. A lot of them are broken. A lot of them are heavy. I can't really pick them up because I'm too weak. So I think the medical officer has decided to um, hop into the armor rig. Uh, he did a reaction check on Fletcher. Um, Fletcher uh, executed a move, which uh, fortunately uh, he did not attack. So the medical officer is now inside the armor rig. Medical officer is going to do hasty movement. Uh, we're gonna do a reaction check for Fletcher. Um, Fletcher can only move one. So the armor rig is basically outrunning Fletcher, but Fletcher's coming after. Um, we're gonna do another hasty movement. And here, with the armor rig on, we can actually lift the turbo laser. So, now the medical officer is wearing an armor rig and he's armed with the turbo laser. He's ready to fuck some shit up. Okay, so after a fairly long, tedious battle, um, the medical officer um, inside the armor rig, armed with the turbo laser, has defeated Fletcher. and is going to head toward the mouse. He's just going to basically try to exterminate these specimens one by one. Um, it's a long, tedious, slow battle, but it looks like the medical officer is going to slowly be able to uh, defeat the last of the specimens. When he does take damage, he can just basically crawl into the med pod uh, repair himself and then continue on so it's um, there's no way he's going to lose at this point it's it's slow going but the medical officer is definitely going to claim victory over these specimens and there you have it medical officer has just defeated Gollum and at this point I believe all the victory conditions have been met the ship systems are restarted, there are no breaches in the hall, and every single specimen has been dealt with, Oop, except for Mother. I missed Mother. Uh, mother only has an, an impair of one, but has a shield of eight, so it's going to take a long time, but um, the medical officer is going to be able to defeat Mother eventually. And my second playthrough of The Wreck of the BSM Pandora was a success. I got through an entire game. Uh, I lost two of my crew members, but the sole survivor was able to hobble along, discover all of the ship systems, get the ship restarted, and then acquire the armor bot and turbo laser to exterminate the escaped species. It was a long, slow, arduous process, but I uh, got through it and completed the game.